you want to be safe first as a kid. You want the action to be safe. And if, and if he's safe and he's sort of successful, he's balling straight and he, he's balling nicely and you see him advancing, I wouldn't train you too much. I think with a red ball, you have to be very, uh, so your technique's more specific. You'll get found out if you've been playing white ball cricket and then you're lazy on the basics and you come back and try and play red ball cricket. I felt it worked best for me when the paces didn't drop too much. If I could go from in my prime at 88 and 90, then the next one was maybe an 84 and you get and get a line, a tiny bit of uh, variation where you get someone driving at a ball that's not there to be driven and you get catches at uh, uh, mid on, mid off. That's how I felt benefited me. If they played a good shot from a good delivery, then I'm, I'm happy with that. Can they do it again, again and again? I think to be a successful professional bowler, you got to be able to either swing it, seam it, have bounce or accuracy. Uh, generally, the fitter you are, the longer you last in the game. Cricket Love Stories with me, Neil Kagram. Today, we're joined by Liam Plunkett. Liam, how's it all going? I'm good, mate. Nice to uh, be able to have a chat with you and... Uh, Obviously, it's getting to some uh, some good cricket skills and some things that I might have done back in the day and hopefully what, what helped me can help other people. So Yeah, I'm very grateful for your time. If this chat's all going to be about fast bowling, some of your tips that you've done in terms of the training side of things, how you've gone about things from a mental perspective. But before we dive into the chat, you're out in America at the moment. Just for those that may not know, let us know what you're doing out there currently. Yeah, very uh, excited to get an opportunity to be involved with uh, Major League Cricket. Um, that competition starts, uh, I think, next year, 2020, we're now 23. Uh, I think there's going to be something that's going to kick off this year, like an opening ceremony. Uh, that That's not, uh, that's just being penciled in. So that's exciting. But in the meantime, uh, I'm working with the, the academy, uh, Philadelphia Major League Academy, and uh, getting my teeth stuck into that, helping restructure that. Uh, make it become um, a more professional outfit. They've got a great structure in place now. Uh, they've got a, a couple of guys who opened up a facility 10 years ago for, for the love and the passion of cricket. So a lot of people come along there and uh, practice and use that facility. So it's hopefully we build on that. And as I said, linking in with the Major League is, is very exciting. We've seen what uh, happened with the soccer. So hopefully down the line, we can get that explosion and uh, cricket become a, a mainline sport in America. No, it's very exciting indeed. But let's just dive into some of the, the chat. When it comes to, does it all start at preparation for yourself as a fast bowler? And can you give us a little insight how you have and what you are doing currently in terms of, you know, from a physical perspective and how you prepare yourself from a mental perspective away from the, uh, the actual match day field? For me, yeah, pretty much like a lot of people, when, when I feel good, I, I often like act good. I, so it's normally if I feel like I'm doing all the right stuff outside, uh, I, I, away from the pitch, over that white line, if I'm looking after myself and doing my, uh, my training, eating clean, that sort of gives me the clarity to feel like I can uh, do well in a game situation. In terms of when I'm around high performance and when I'm playing for the national team a few years ago, two years back, it's, but that was the case is putting my hard work in and make sure you didn't leave anything out. So when you did turn up and you played on the biggest stage, you ticked all them boxes off and say, for instance, you did fail, you realised that someone could have played well, it wasn't your day, but you're doing everything you can to uh, give yourself the best chance. When you were coming through the ranks as a youngster, do you have, did you have coaches who try to change your action in any way? You know, if a youngster's perhaps watching this and they're kind of experiencing that similar scenario, what advice would you give them? Uh, I mean, it's quite difficult, isn't it, for me? You want to be safe first as a kid. You want the action to be safe. And if, and if he's safe and he's sort of successful, he's bowling straight and he, he's bowling nicely and you see him advancing, I wouldn't change it too much. Uh, it's when it's not safe and you feel like he's gonna, he could damage his or her. They could damage their, themselves. Uh, I've been through some experiences when I was in my teens. Uh, probably not going to name names. It's probably not the best thing to be doing. But I went through a thing where uh, people were trying to get everyone to ball like a certain person. And it, and it wasn't meant to be. For me, I had a, 
I've got long limbs and I sort of in my back of my mind, I didn't look like this. I used to think in my mind about like Kirtley Ambrose or Courtney Walsh with the big limbs. But as I said, I probably didn't look like that. But people are trying to change that from a high load to a low load. Uh, and that just didn't work for me. I lost my pace and I lost my bounce. Uh, and then later on down the line, I reverted back to what was natural to me. But that was a struggle going from my natural action to changing it to shorten up my levers. People obviously showing up your levers is quite hard to demonstrate, but going from a high position and also then from this position, referring to my arm as the lever is, uh, is a difficult thing to do. And then trying to revert back to your, your typical, typical action, it, it, took some long, it took a long time for me. Uh, it took some good coaches, some patient coaches who put in a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with me to help get back to where I needed to be. Uh, so yeah, I've, I've been through some experiences and I'm very wary, especially as a coach now myself and looking after kids is not to jump quickly and make them change because it doesn't look natural as long as it's safe and they're performing. That's the key for me. You look deeply into the biomechanics of the action. A lot said when you're talking about fast bowling, having a brace front leg, shoulder hip separation. I think if you look through professional cricketers, everyone's got a different action. And for me, it's safe. Uh, in terms of the biomechanics is realistically what helps the ball a ball fast is what you mentioned. Obviously, that might be the best way to go about it, but not everyone can be doing that. You can try and get people to a certain point, but some people just can't get to that point and they're very successful, not, not ticking all in boxes. And when it comes from a mindset perspective, can you run us through how you differentiated between the red ball and white ball game in terms of your approach? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think towards the back end, I actually struggled a little bit with that. Uh, I went through periods in my career back home in, in the UK where I play a lot of red ball cricket. I wouldn't play so much white ball cricket and then vice versa. But uh, it, it is a mindset thing. But for me, I did swing the red ball a lot. So if I've been playing with a white ball, I normally try to run it in top of off and hopefully hold its line. Uh, I bought a lot of cross seam, a lot of wobble, wobble seam and didn't try and take it away. Uh, so when it came to the red ball, my action allowed the ball to swing. And you can get lazy with white ball and you can sort of get used to falling away and pushing the, the ball in because you don't want it really too much width in well, any form of cricket. But in white ball cricket, the ball gets cut, goes to, to the boundary very quickly. So I, I found it hard coming back to red ball and I bowled quite a lot of width. Uh, a lot of easy leave balls, uh, not threatening the, the batters or threatening the stumps. But it is a, a mind thing. I think with a red ball, you have to be very, uh, so your technique's more specific. You'll get found out if you've been playing white ball cricket and then you're lazy on the basics and you come back and try and play red ball cricket. That's me personally. I did find it hard and I had to put a lot more hard work in, in terms of my action, holding my action, making sure my alignment was right. And, and to be fair, I did struggle with that towards the back end of my career. When it comes to variations in white ball cricket, Everyone does talk about having the Yorker, the slower ball, et cetera. How much a practice did you put into it? How much emphasis would you, would you say, you know, is it important to have that? Or is it, or is the key just to have one or two keys that you can nail every time and then the rest almost follows? What tips would you give a youngster perhaps struggling in terms of the variation aspects of white ball cricket? Yeah, you want to have your bread and butter. You want to be able to hit your uh, good length, which obviously is the length that you want the batsman to play at, the length what the batsman's unsure to go forward or back. You need to have that day in, day out. And so when you do try to bowl a slow ball, it doesn't quite work. You can go back to that delivery of being consistent at your length. But I feel it's with the modern game, as many slow balls possible is uh, the best way to go about it. But get good at each one. And it could start by just learning as a kid to bowl an off quarter, just putting your fingers down it and pretty much like a fast off spinner. So ideally for me, it's can you have a ball that goes away from the left-hander? Can you have a ball that goes away from the right-hander? Then some of it comes out the front or the back. So if you have three sort of slow balls, that's ideal. Uh, a lot of guys will have a back of the hand and a knuckle ball, off cutter, leg cutter. Uh, the more tools in your toolbox is obviously going to give you more skills and give you more chance of getting wickets. But also, it's, if you have too many tools, you might overuse them. So that's also another thing. To, to, for me, I was very fortunate playing in a very strong England team. And when I bowled, was a lot in the middle. 
Uh, so the variations that I used was more moving the seam around in terms of a wobble seam, as, as I mentioned, and a, and a cross seam and an off cutter. Uh, something out the front of the hand was uh, a tiny bit of variation, but I felt it worked best for me when the paces didn't drop too much. If I could go from in my prime 88 and 90, then the next one was maybe an 84 and you get and get a, line, a tiny bit of uh, variation where you get someone driving at a ball that's not there to be driven and you get catches at... Uh, uh, mid on mid off that's how i felt benefited me when you're approaching um, bowling and over in one day cricket did you almost have a plan in terms of say the first two balls if it was a dot ball then you would almost throw in say a, a very a, a yorker ball or a bouncer how would how did you structure the six balls and again uh, any tips you can give a young player on that Depends the situation of the game also. Depends what the batter was doing. If the batter was looking to attack, was did the batter just come in? Was he looking to survive and yeah, get himself in? But for me, I was trying, a lot of the times, I was trying to hit my length as hard as possible, uh, making the batsman play, uh, but be undecisive, making them do something different. If they played a good shot from a good delivery, then I'm, I'm happy with that. Can they do it again, again, and again? Um, I would always look to ball an aggressive bouncer to make the batsman feel uncomfortable. I'm not saying that he didn't play it and hit me for four, hit me for six, but it's in the back of their mind. They know that you've got a good bouncer. Uh, so, yeah, for me, it was let me hit my length as hard as I can. Let me see what the batsman's going to do. Sometimes I would throw in a different ball. It just depends how I was feeling. But as long as I practice all these balls previously and I knew I can pull them out when I wanted to ball them I was always I was happy with that it's not like I'm just going to practice a back of the hand ball that I've not so I'm not going to come into a game and ball a back of the hand delivery I'm not going to pick that out of thin air if I've not practiced it so everything was sort of in calculation with what's going on in the game how do I think I can get this guy out is it time that we need to attack and get a wicket or am I happy sitting in and, and getting some dot balls and getting some singles and putting the pressure on on the batters then if a young bowler perhaps does have the tools to bowl a slower ball, but consistency is a problem in terms of they can almost nail it one every 10 balls. What drills were you doing so that your skill levels were so high and then you, you were able to execute it at the crunch moments? I think it's just practice repetition. It's putting yourself on, under pressure in practice. Can they do that? Because if they're nailing it once in, once in 10, that's, yeah, that's, Obviously, the numbers, you need to get that up to six, seven out of ten, uh, especially like an off cut or a leg cut. People, that becomes the normal delivery for people. Uh, as a fast bowler, generally, someone can roll the fingers across an off cut and land it where they want to land it. So it's be able to repeat and repeat and repeat, as you, you said. Uh, it's just maybe looking at yourself and maybe getting someone to video yourself to see people are visual learners. And sometimes when people are asking them or... Saying, I think you need to do this, this, and this. It just doesn't register. So maybe them give them different options of learning. For me, I love to watch the video clips of me trying to ball a certain delivery because that sat with me and I could sort of uh, link it into myself, then going on to ball. Uh, if someone was speaking to me, I would pick it up a little bit, but it didn't translate as well as watching something. Now, when it comes to Red Bull cricket, do you believe that as a, as a medium-fast fast bowler, you can succeed if you don't move the ball? And then, again, perhaps you can almost like show the screen in terms of what you did in terms of your seam position, release point, etc. I think to be a successful professional bowler, you've got to be able to either swing it, seam it, have bounce or accuracy. You need to have one of them things. Uh, if you're just a baller who's running up ball, ball in a little bit of this, a little bit of that, then you're not going to last too long. Uh, just to general for me, if I was playing red ball cricket, it depends when it was in my career in the UK. Early on, I was bowled a lot of uh, just stand up away swinger where I would run up and try and swing it away, maybe try and push in an in swinger. Um, then later on, even in red ball cricket, when I came back and played for, for Yorkshire, I, I, ran, I went around the a wicket and sort of was used as an enforcer. I would bowl a lot of cross seam and the cross seam worked for me. And that's when it sort of started for me, the whole cross seam. Uh, revolution I guess for me in terms of my career was I would run around the wicket ball fast uh, ball into the wicket ball bounces and obviously with the cross seam sometimes it hits the seam and bounces and you get that unpredictable bounce sometimes it hits the uh, uh, what you call it the, the shiny side or the rough side and it skids on well I was very yeah traditional in terms of a waist swing uh, seam 
same position uh, and also the in-swinger which if the ball was swinging a lot I could bowl an in-swinger but it wasn't like a go-to ball for me it wasn't something I could just pluck out the air like Jimmy does. If we just focus now on the the topic of coping with you know pressure mm -hmm. you see it banded around that when, when, when someone's talking about that, so, that topic a lot of focus is on the batsman the batswoman but for you as a quick bowler you know you played in the biggest game the World Cup final how did you cope with the pressure of the occasion and the pressure in terms of executing your skills on the bigger stage? I think what I mentioned a little bit earlier is making sure in practice that I've done everything I can to make myself uh, clear-minded when I step onto the pitch. A lot of it can come with experience. I'm very fortunate to play for England for over a period of time and I'd experienced some uh, the, the back of the, the Ashes 2005 when the cricket was big in the UK and I went on a few tours then when obviously Fred and KP and these guys were popular. So it was from an early, from early in my career, there was quite a lot of uh, pressure and there was a lot of crowds coming to watch. And then you're playing bigger tournaments, you're playing county cricket with, with the fans and you make uh, Lord's finals and there's more added pressure. So you learn from that. And then we got beat in a World Cup final. Uh, so you're used to being in that scenario and that situation with the, the high stakes. And then I think with the team we played and the captain we had in Morgs, it was just express yourself, enjoy yourself. And everyone was pushing each other at that point. As well as people playing in the IPL, I managed to play in the IPL and the crowds there, that's like playing an international tournament. You're playing with the best people in the world against the best people in the world. And you sort of just learn to live in that environment and you learn to thrive in it. And if you don't, then obviously you get found out and you go back to uh, county cricket or you don't last in the game too long. You need to learn to sort of love it. When it came to the World Cup final, I felt like I'd been through a lot in terms of who I played for and the situations. So I just sort of thought, like, I'm going to go out there and enjoy it. Uh, and what's meant to be is meant to be. I'm not a massive... Uh, believe in certain stuff but I just thought it was written in the stars that day so I just thought to myself I'm going to enjoy it there was nerves but it, it was good nerves so are you big on say that like, visualization say the day before a game would you almost um you know mark out your run and at the top of your mark visualize bowling certain deliveries to certain players is that something that you implemented as a pro sometimes I did I think as the cricketer you go through, for me, I can't speak for anyone else. As a bowler, I went through sort of waves in my, uh, in well, so far up to date in my career, where sometimes I did do the visual thing. Sometimes I'd sing a song in, the, in, in my head before I bowl just to clear it. I knew what ball I was going to bowl, then I'd sing a song, then run up and bowl. Uh, before a game, often I would speak to the guy who does all the, uh, the video content and obviously all the, the stuff on the overseas batters or like an Aussie team and I would look at it get it on my phone and maybe watch what the dot ball deliveries were and where they might get the singles I didn't really like to watch them hitting fours or sixes because I didn't want to have that in my head when I was bowling at people uh, there's so much on TV you can see your players and you play against all these guys uh, that the content's there to watch so in my mind if I was bowling at a, a left hander I know that he struggles uh, on, on, on his pads or he doesn't like the ball like an off cut going away then that's what I would watch. Whereas his wicked ball, he, he might uh, sort of fend at one just outside of stump, a good chance of getting caught. He might clip it in mid wicket. There's a catching option there. So I always ha I'd always have uh, this the day before on my phone, having a coffee, looking through videos of how people uh, dot ball, wicket ball, and maybe a single. And if you reflect back, what would you say has been the most difficult part of fast bowling, and how you generally overcame that that problem, that difficulty? I think in terms of changing my action, to be honest with you, uh, going from obviously the long lever to the short lever to the long lever again uh, and being consistent. I, th I found it hard over my career to be consistent at a lot of that stages. It was only probably the last five, six years that I was more consistent. Uh, but, but yeah, I mean, in terms of being a fast ball, it's, it, it is demanding in terms of you need to be fit and you need to be strong like you see the guys on TV now. But I, I loved that part of it. That was part of the job I really loved. And I probably overdid it and maybe picked up some, in, some injuries from overtraining. Uh, some of the guys who lasted long know when to train. And it is cricket that you get paid for. You don't get paid for being the best triathlon and triathlete in the team. So you need to realise at that point. So uh, maybe something I could have picked up a lot earlier in my career. And who knows, I uh, could have played a bit more for England. And Liam, it's been a fascinating chat. England international, World Cup winner, 
But just to end on, if a young player is watching this, what would, you be, what would be the best tip and advice you'd give them on fast bowling? First off, enjoy it. Also, it's not always going to go your way, but that's, that's part and parcel of the game. Uh, as you mentioned earlier, explore, ball your slow balls, uh, your off-court as your back behind your knuckle balls. Don't be afraid to uh, uh, challenge yourself. And, and yeah, keep as fit as you can because that's going to pay off in the, in the long run. Uh, generally, the fitter you are, the longer you last in the game. Uh, your, your engine lasts longer. You can bowl faster and longer for periods in the game. And if, if you hopefully eventually go and play test cricket, you can be as good as ball one as you, you are on the last day and uh, on day five. Liam, perfect. Thank you again for your time today. Really appreciate it. And all the best in the American adventure. Thanks, mate. Great to chat. The Neil Kagram Cricket Life Stories, Liam Plunkett. Thank you.